This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Today I'm very excited to share with you guys some of the new features of the new Trapcode Particular and Trapcode Form in the latest release of Trapcode Suite 15. This is an amazing update, not only because this is kind of like the industry standard particle system within After Effects, um, but they added something really, really cool and I think you'll be really interested in, it's kind of called the fluid dynamics kind of physics system that they've implemented here that allows you to create these really nice wispy kind of animations that you wouldn't be able to create um, otherwise in previous versions of Trepco Particular or any other particle system uh, up to this date. And as you can see, it creates this really nice wispy interaction. Um, the particles flow more real realistically. And normally this would be achieved with a 3D application such as Cinema 4D with X particles or a 3ds Max with like fume effects and Krakatoa. And funny story, this is how I kind of actually started with After Effects here. I started uh, into motion design actually through particle work. And I really want to create that kind of 3D, uh, 3D particle uh, Krakatoa uh, and fume effects look within After Effects. And I really couldn't do it. Um, and I didn't really understand why. It just didn't look right. The physics didn't look right. And it wasn't until later that I realized that, oh, you need to do kind of like a fluid simulation to kind of create that wispy, more realistic uh, fractal look um, kind of grouped together and flow to get the physics right. And that just wasn't possible with After Effects and the fractal displacement uh, within particular at the time. And now we're a little bit closer. We're not quite there yet. Um, but again, this is really revolutionary considering this is After Effects and it renders really fast here. So rather than me just talking about it here, let's go ahead and just show you so this is actually not going to be a tutorial at all. This is going to be me just pretty much rambling about what's uh, kind of new in this version of particular and form, uh, specifically the fluid uh, dynamic system here. And this is very, very cool here. So here I just have a basic particle system, uh, nothing new. You can create this in particular right now or, or prior versions of particular. Um, so right here, I'm going to go ahead and just try to tell you what, or show you what I'm talking about before. So the physics here, um, this is the classical physics air model that we've ha always had. And if you want to create kind of like, you know, smoke or dust or fire or liquid or whatever, and you want to create that kind of that grouping dispersed look that we always try to create, it would probably start with a dis uh, turbulence field here. We'd probably affect size up a little bit. So we kind of get this fake grouping that's caused by the change in size and opacity. And then if you want to randomize this up a little bit, we can go ahead and add some uh, position that will kind of just warp the position a little bit. And then we would probably change around the scale to make something smaller, like 15 or something like that. We would change the evolution speed to like 25. And, you know, we would, you know, add some wind if you wanted to, you know, push it more to the right, maybe push it up a little bit. We would add some wind and we would hit play and you would kind of get this weird kind of flowy motion with these kind of like holes that you can see from the fractal. And you know, overall this could kind of work if you were doing actual air stuff, like, like maybe wind or some birds flying or something like that. But you know, it just looks kind of weird because the particles are not really flowing, um, kind of grouped together. They're kind of just randomly dispersed. You see these kind of like dispersed particles, um, you know, kind of doing its own thing, not really staying grouped together. And if you really want to really make this dispersed and but still somehow keep it clustered. Um, as like one solid object or one kind of fluid object, um, you could increase the position, but eventually, you know, you start to lose the detail and now it just looks like a big blob that kind of just wiggles everywhere and kind of just flows everywhere a little bit more chaotically. It basically, it just looks too uniform and you can create the number of particles up and that would try to fill it in. And, but you know, overall, it doesn't look realistic if you were trying to create some sort of flame or smoke simulation, put it that way. And now we have something here. Let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and go to the emitter type. We'll change it from point to sphere. So now we're gonna emit from a sphere. We'll change the size to 250. And so now let's go ahead and go to the physics and we'll go ahead and change it from air, which we've had, bounce we've had, but now to the new fluid model here. And just doing that real quickly, you can see that we, uh, as you can see, we already get a more realistic kind of flowy type of uh, physics simulation here. As you can see, things are dispersed pretty widely, but they still kind of stay together and flow together as a group, as a single unit here. And this just wasn't possible with um, the particle system that we've had before. Um, so we have a few options here. Um, there's not too many options here, so we can go bounce through it. 
But basically, we have um, fluid force, which is we have a few here, buoyancy and squirt only, which is going to be kind of the upward motion. Buoyancy is kind of the upward motion exerted on something uh, that's in a fluid here. So we set the buoyancy to like zero. It's just kind of it's just going to float there. It's not going to move anywhere. If we set it to like a negative three, it's going to kind of flow down. The uh, the buoyancy force is going to flow down. And as you can see, we get that nice, wispy, kind of uh, more flowy animation here. And things are not just going uniformly dispersed out and look too chaotic. This is more of a single fluid unit here. So that's the buoyancy, the force reach and size. So this is kind of like the simulation window, but kind of not. This is the, the force area. So right now we just have the buoyancy force and the swirls. Um, and so if we decrease it, the force is really gonna be just a small little rectangle and it completely changes kind of what happens to your, uh, to your animation here. So if we increase the size, the force is gonna be larger and it's gonna affect the particles um, a little bit different. And so the residual particles are, um, are more here. If we increase the size, then all the particles are gonna be affected more by the force until it leaves and then it kind of just residuals and lets, and lets the physics kind of take over here. Um, and then we have um, this random swirl. So this will kind of add some more twists and turns um, to kind of like your, your physics simulation here. So it's more like spinny and twisty, kind of spreads it out a little bit, but still a single nice uniform uh, simulation here. And then of course, um, we have something here called visualize relative density. And basically this is kind of like a transfer mode, but it's not really, so basically, um, it really just makes your particle system, systems pop. And so the more dense it is, I guess the more opaque it's gonna be, or the more dense it is, uh, the brighter it's gonna be. So kind of like a transfer mode in a way. And then here we have the global fluid controls. And these are the global controls that you can use to either slow it down. So this is the fluid time factor. So if you do two, it's gonna speed everything up and the fluid system simulation is gonna be a lot faster here. As you can see, things flow a lot faster. Or if you want to kind of slow-mo the whole thing, you can change it to like 0.5 and it will be significantly slower. So you can do slow motion fluid pours and you know, Coca-Cola drinks and stuff like that, um, you know, this way. Uh, the viscosity is kind of like how heavy or how resistant is this, this particle system um, moving. So a high viscosity would mean it's kind of like in molasses or honey, it's moving very sluggish and it's very, very kind of resisting the urge to move. Whereas you set it to like, you know, five, it's gonna be very, very free to move. It's gonna be moving kind of like gas particles, you know, free and easy and it really flows really, really well. Um, so yeah, so let's set this back to maybe like 20 or so. And simulation fidelity, uh, I'm gonna show you this a little bit later, but this is the detail, basically the, the accuracy detail of the whole simulation here. But before we do, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other options here. Let's go ahead and we will increase the number of particles to let's say 4,000 so we can really see this stuff here. And let's go ahead and let's go into the physics. And instead of buoyancy and swirl only, we'll go to ver uh, vortex ring. This is a pretty cool one um, in a sense that you are creating this kind of twisty animation and kind of using it um, to kind of twist your particles. And if you go to the camera view here and just rotate, you can kind of see what it's doing. So basically this whole little ring here serves as kind of like a vortex kind of thing. It's, it's gonna spin your particles as it enters. And let's go ahead and go to the, the velocity here, which is to like 500, so we can kind of get a move on. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just move this closer to my particles. As you can see, once it's in there, it's gonna start spinning uh, my particles a little bit. And let's, let's see here, which we'll moves the center. And then you have um, the vortex strength, so how strong is the force here, and the arrows kind of indicate, um, you know, how strong the magnitude of the force is here. So we can really crank this up to 400. And it's really gonna just spin those particles, and you can kind of just play around with, uh, 
kind of what's going on here. And then you can also change the core size a little bit. And that will give you kind of a different look here. It makes the force feel kind of bigger. So you really get this really nice uh, simulation here going on. So you can kind of twist particles and bend particles that way. Um, and kind of uh, give it that rotational twist access in that direction. Um, and there's some, you know, options like you can tilt the particles, um, the, the force, you can rotate it. And you would get a, oh, and the fluid factor is 0.5, so let's to like one. And you can really see kind of what it does here, kind of just bends and twists everything. And that's pretty much the vortex ring. Um, and of course you still have all your random swirl and random scale. This swirl scale is how detailed this, the twisting and turning is. So if we up this amount to like 20 or 30, the details of the twist is gonna be a lot more. Whereas if I change the swirl scale to like five, which is smaller, the twist is gonna be larger. So think of it kind of like the displacement um, displacement feature, the fractal displacement that you see in particular form. Um, so the twists are kind of larger. So I tend to keep this pretty small, or sorry, smaller twist, which means a larger uh, swirl scale, so like a 30 or so. So we get some more fine detail. Um, there, there's some, so there are some options that way. Uh, the last one here is vortex tube, and this kind of just spins the whole thing, kind of like a, this is an actual vortex. Uh, I think here. So it kind of just spins the whole particle along this axis. So they kind of do kind of the same thing here, except, um, let's go ahead turn this down. Except they kind of do it in a different axis. And you can obviously change the buoyancy still. You can change the core size, which is basically everything in the middle is not really affected. So it's just the outer ring here. That's the force. Um, so by playing around in the, um, the designer here, you can do a lot more things. You can see a lot more things. And I don't know if it's just me, but I think it just renders faster and it's easier to work with. You can really see what's going on. And so as you can see, this kind of creates that nice round vortex. Look, you can create tornadoes or galaxies or you know what have you with this new particle system. And that's pretty much the general idea of it. Before I show you some more cool things, I want to go ahead and give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the all-in-one place to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They are the place to be. They have beautiful, customizable themes. You can edit pretty much anything you want and make it the way you want it to look without any coding skills required. Best of all, they have really, really great support and really great pricing for everyone's budget. So if you want to support the channel, go ahead and go to squarespace.com slash dojo. And if you use the promo code dojo at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order. So go ahead and check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So the cool thing about particular is that you can actually create multiple particle systems and have them interact with each other using the fluid dynamic system as well. And so you can duplicate particle systems and you can modify them and have them interact with each other and it will play nicely with each other. So if we just um, go ahead and just, we can go and decrease the emitter size to like 150 for this second one here and change the color to like a blue color. And we can go into physics and we'll just change the random seed. And we'll change it from vortex tube to just say buoyancy and just change the buoyancy to like five you can really start to see how they kind of interact and intermesh with each other here in the fluid in the systems kind of play around with each other so the upward buoyancy particles are playing around with the the kind of spinning vortex particles here and you get this really nice balance um realistic most importantly most realistic kind of look um with the particle systems here and particular comes with a lot of demos where you can kind of see um, what's going on. As you can see, I'm, I can navigate through it pretty fast and really just navigate through and play. And it's really not a huge drag at all. And it looks more realistic than the fractal, fractal noise based displacement that you see with the fractal displacement fields. And, you know, particular comes with a lot of presets here that you can play around with, with the multiple system presets and single presets. You can see like smoke simulations and fire simulations and uh, cloud simulations and smoke and things just look a lot cooler and a lot better with the fluid system. And I feel like I'll be using the fluid system a lot more 
uh, for a lot of different things here. You can actually up the particle count quite a bit. You get some pretty, really cool, smooth, fluid result, especially if you turn down the particle size to like a one and really just crank up the particle count here. I'm talking about like millions, like pretty much as far as you can go. Um, I've done it many times and it still renders relatively fast, only a couple of seconds per frame, um, depending on how fast your computer is, what GPU you're using and whatnot. Um, and again, this is just the first major release of the Fluid system, and I'm sure it'll get faster and a lot better and more complex um, as the time goes by here. But um, so as you can see, I just kind of added this many particles here and get this really nice, more fluid, smoky, wispy kind of particle look here. Um, if we go ahead and add trap code form, and we go to the base form, we'll go ahead and just increase the size a little bit. And we can actually see that we also have the fluid system as well. So we can enable the fluid motion. And just like that, you kind of get this nice flowy type of fluid simulation. And the settings and the parameters are exactly the same as the one in particular. So you can go into the designer here and pretty much play around with a different type of trap code form presets here. Um, and they may work differently uh, because form pretty much particles um, exist 24 seven. So they don't really emit and they don't really die. They kind of just exist as a, as a existing force here. So they might be more appropriate for things that don't really necessarily die. They're trying to make. Um, so form and particular both have the new fluid system. We can do some pretty interesting and really nice realistic things that you couldn't do before in the previous version of trap code particular. So hopefully you guys enjoy the trap code form particular versions and send them any feedback that you like. So, I'm also very curious as to what you guys think about the new particular inform fluid systems here. If you guys find it useful, you guys could create anything awesome. I would definitely love to see it, but most importantly, just have fun with it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much just code form in particular, the new fluid system here, not really tutorial, but I just want to show you guys some of the new cool stuff that I'm playing around with. Um, so check it out, code form in particular of code Suite 15, links in the description down below. My name is Vincent Nguyen, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.